Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the anime streaming wars. That anime is one of the biggest fronts in the streaming wars. We've been saying that. I was going to say, that sounds so familiar because we've been saying this for weeks. Oh my God. Imagine yeah. that. So now that it's coming from The Verge, uh, I guess it's, it's official that anime is a huge, huge battleground for the streaming wars. This is why we talk about it because it, it is it is going to be very, very important, uh, I think. And I think we're going to see a lot of changes in the way that anime is delivered over the next few months, the companies that are mm -hmm. delivering uh, anime in the next few months. We're going to talk about all that. We're going to talk about, you know, what to kind of expect from the streaming wars and why people are, are upset that maybe the money's not making its way to Japan and uh, all of that. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Yep. We're at about 85,000 subs and hoping for 100,000 yep. soon. Make sure you're still subscribed. Make sure you're still subscribed. So, Geeky likes anime. I do. I love anime. What are some of your favorite shows? Um, well, I like, there's a lot of older ones I like. Like, yeah. I love, you know, Sailor Moon, of course, mm -hmm. Fruits Basket. And I love uh, Orin High School Host Club. Yes. Actually, uh, Pinky Boo used to watch that when she was little. So, when she was real little, she used to ask for Commoner's Ramen. <laughs> and I love Inuyasha, as my absolute favorites ever. I like uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah, I love. I need to watch more of it. Yeah, we, I, I got, need to catch up on it. I think I got through the second season. Did you get the second season? Because I didn't get through the second I season. I think I got through most of the second season, and then I didn't watch the movie though. I wanted to watch. I the watched movie. the movie, yeah. and then I like. Um, oh, we watched Yuri on Ice, and I don't know. There's so many. It's more. The question is more like, what don't you like? Because there's so many I'd like. So. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch any in about two like series the whole way through hmm. in a year or two. Rising the Shield Hero. Well, yeah, I was gonna say that's the only one I've been able to watch the love whole way through. Love that one. Um, so far this year, the only ones I've actually been able to check out, uh, Shield Hero, I watched the whole way through. My Hero Academia, I've been trying to keep up with. And uh, Promise Neverland. I said I, Promise Neverland. Yeah, did. that's one you're not going to watch. Nope, I'm not going to uh, watch it. Sorry. You know, I, it was weird because I went into Promise Neverland not knowing anything about it. I'm just like, oh, it's a bunch of kids on the run from something. That looks kind of cool. We'll watch that and see what's up. And it's like, oh, they eat kids. That's the whole mm -hmm. plot. That's why the kids well, are on the Well, if anybody hasn't seen it yet, now that you've ruined it. Well, they have the kids on the on the cover of the box the kids are sitting on a dinner plate are they really yes that, sh that should have given it away to you it should have but it didn't i because i didn't know anything about it I, I mean it's a huge deal but it was just like oh okay i get the dinner plate thing now i thought maybe they were going out to eat oh there you go they're but they're they going are, out to eat they are the they're, they're the fast food they are um, <laughs> they're fast food. take home menu but i um i i love to watch more and my problem is time yeah, that's a problem we have, too, because we're trying to keep on top of stuff. We're trying to get our own projects off the ground, uh, so we don't have a lot of time to sit down. But we've got, like, drawers and drawers and drawers full of anime DVDs. Remember mm -hmm. those? Yes. Remember DVDs? Uh, yeah, those little discs that have movies on them. Yeah, we have a whole bunch. A whole bunch I even of have live, I even have the live-action Sailor Moons. Of questionable legality. Yes. But, but I have them. We do, yeah. It's But anyway, most people now are watching anime on streaming services. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the new battleground. In fact, I don't think we've... I think the last anime we actually bought is a DVD as you bought Sailor Stars uh, when that came out. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't buy nearly well, actually, as much. you bought it. I bought it for you. Yeah, yes. for our anniversary. Was it um, anniversary? Yes. I don't know. I think it was just a, just because I love you. No, present. it was for anniversary, I think. And I was going to buy it. And you're like, dang it, I already bought it for you. Oh, and yeah, I, was, this, I have this uncanny knack. And I don't do it on purpose. But I have this amazing skill at finding out what Neon bought me before whatever event has come up that he's going to give it to me. And it's not my fault. And oftentimes it is not me who, who it's not my fault that I find out. Yeah, I, she's yeah, she's really good at it. I can't hide anything. So, so I don't go looking um, for it. I just always find out. Yeah. So I already ruined my Christmas presents, but it wasn't my fault. It was actually Neon's fault. So It was. I forgot it was in the trunk of the car. So it's not my fault. It's no wonder we can't keep up with all the anime coming out because according to The Verge, there are 30 to 50 new shows every three months. Yeah, I can't do it. I tried. Uh, I'm lucky if I get to watch a half a dozen shows a year. So we try to pick what's considered, I guess, the best of the right. best. Right, and I also watch a lot of like uh, K drama, C drama, and stuff like that too. So if I have time, I usually watch one of those instead of anime. Usually, it just yeah. depends on you know how much I want to see something. Uh, Carol on Tuesday, I gotta watch. I've been hearing really good things. Anyway, they're talking about how with all the uh, all the the services now that stream anime, that you can legally get pretty much every show for forty two bucks a month, but you have to subscribe to like five different services. Right. 
to I'm do looking, it. I'm looking. We subscribe to some of those. We have Crunchyroll. We don't have Funimation. Uh, Netflix, Amazon Prime. High Dive. I've, I don't even... I've never really... Mm -mm. I don't think we've ever checked out High Dive. No, we have so many different ones we already subscribe to. I'm sure we pay a lot. <laughs> so Yeah, we do. But, uh, you know, this is in stark contrast to how it used to be back in the day where if you wanted to watch anime, mm -hmm. now some of you old heads out there will remember you would have to go to like a blockbuster video mm -hmm. and rent from their very, very limited selection of anime, which was usually just like Akira and Robot Carnival. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like what they had. Or you could go to like a Suncoast video. Uh -huh. They were so expensive. I Evangelion I bought on VHS. I paid thirty to forty dollars a tape. Tapes, remember those? Yeah, and they didn't I, get much on a tape. You got two episodes. <gasps> oh, you got ripped. Uh, so to get the whole series, I had to buy thirteen tapes at thirty to forty bucks a piece. You know what? I bought them because I love the show so much. Wow, you got ripped. I got ripped. Now I can pretty much everything I want for forty-two dollars a month. But now I don't have time to watch it because mm -hmm. I'm old. <laughs> we're no we're busy i'm old and busy it's not like when i was like 20 and i could just you know uh you know spend hours and hours watching the stuff but it's a good time to be young and and have lots of free time or it's a good time to have free time oh inuyasha is in the picture it's my favorites inuyasha is awesome Moon's on there too Yay. yeah yeah the perennial favorites they never they never go out um so they're talking about being a mess and they go through all of the different services and they talk about how funimation broke away from crunchyroll last year after at&t uh, bought out Warner Media, and then mm. we're going to talk more about that because that's going to be important. But they're basically just talking about how anime is becoming more and more important to the streaming wars, and all of the streaming sites, except for Disney Plus, one of their selling points seems to be anime. Netflix made a huge deal about you know one original anime like Castlevania, right. and two you know getting the rights to Evangelion, which they dropped the ball with the translation. But I digress. Uh, but that was a big big deal for them. The only service not doing is Disney Plus, obviously. But uh, you know, they made a huge announcement. Ghibli's going to HBO Max. You know? I'm sorry, I'm distracted by Afro Samurai. Afro Samurai is awesome. I think his hair is amazing. I freaking love Afro I was, Samurai. I was loving it. That's why I was like, I was looking at it like, oh, I like this. Anyway, continue. I'm uh, sorry. Oh my goddess, which I. Oh my, I forgot about. Oh my goddess. Oh my goddess was good. Anyway, anyway, it's continue. I'm sorry. Or oh, it depends on which. Anyway. Those pioneers. Get back to what you're saying. Um. Anyway, so yeah, so anime is becoming more and more important. We've been saying this for well over a year, and this is why. You know, a lot of the drama surrounding the anime industry right now is leaking out into the mainstream because it matters. Because we're seeing that more and more movie studios, you know, now that the well is kind of drying up with superheroes, or the fact is, you know, the superhero rights are tied up. Right. You know, Marvel and DC are tied up with Warner and Disney. So where else do you go? There right. aren't a whole lot of, you know, indie superheroes out there other than Image. No, and a lot of people, I think that's why webcomics were so popular when they were, was because you could go read comics about characters that weren't superheroes. I mean, there were superhero webcomics as well, but most people wanted the stuff that wasn't. It was more like the anime feel or the more, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Well, Webtoon, they're they're going to be doing anime series based on oh, different surprise. Webtoon. Yeah, They've and, been, actually, but now that's coming. The American version is going to do something, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely, this is kind of what the future is, I guess, for everything that's not superhero. So that's why it matters to Hollywood. That's why everybody's spending money on it. Um, but the thing is, I, I thought this was very interesting about this. I mean, you go through the article, and it actually is worth it's worth reading, it, especially if you don't know what shows are on which platform. <laughs> but they're talking about HBO Max and Warner Brothers, and I I'm, I still believe that Crunchyroll is going to get absorbed in HBO Max. Uh, yeah, probably. Because they're they talk about how some of these streaming services actually folded, and they got you know. Well, especially if HBO Max comes out, and people think it's too expensive. They might fold it in, you know what I mean? So it looks like you're getting a better deal. They might right. raise it a little bit, but they, like you said, they have Ghibli and all that. So they might raise it a tiny bit, but you're going to get all that too. So I can see them doing that if it doesn't, you know, people think it's too expensive. Yeah, but um, one of the, the, the selling points, uh, this could lead to more competition. This is what they're saying. This could lead to more competition and investment in the show's company's license, which in turn could hopefully improve the pay and working conditions of animators and other production staff who are already overworked and underpaid uh, and they link to this this article here on vox um i don't i don't think that's gonna happen no it hasn't happened before i mean it, they've had money come in they haven't done that yeah we've talked a little bit about that uh before in different videos we've talked about the situation even in the the philippines with uh top draw mm -hmm. you know netflix that as the demand for this content increases you would think 
that they would pay people more, but they really don't. No, because they're trying to get twice as many shows, out of, you know what I mean, out, out, of the, out of it now. So the money might have twice as much money, but you're spreading it over twice as many shows. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Who can keep up with anime? I mean, 200 animated TV series alone made in Japan each year. Mm -hmm. 200. In the U.S., it's a big deal if Cartoon Network has one or two new shows a year. In Japan, they're cranking these shows out. So there is a, a, a shortage of talent, you think, they'd be paying more. No, they said they, they rely on a large pool of essentially unpaid freelancers who are passionate about anime. Yeah, and that's not too dissimilar to what's going on with comic books over mm -hmm. here. You know, the comic book industry doesn't pay nearly as much as they used to because there's so many people who, you know, they'll work on these comic books for next to nothing because they're young and they can do it. And they also think that if they play the game, they're going to get further ahead. And, th and that's usually not how it works. No, and I'm looking at this, and they're saying that the entry level people are in between, and they're the freelancers, but they're saying that they can come up, they can get paid about 200 yen per drawing, which is less than $2. $2 a drawing. They said a drawing could take like an hour or more. Yeah. So, you know, wow. Yeah, even if you move up the ladder, become a keyframe animator, you won't earn much. Uh, even if your title is a huge hit, like Attack on Titan, you won't make any of it. Uh, you won't make any of the money off it. It's a structural problem in the anime industry. There is no dream job as an animator because actually who's making the money is the IP holder. Well, I think that's the same here. I mean, honestly, there's tiny people coming. I mean, let's be honest. There's all these people who are going to go to school for animation and they're coming out like in droves, but the animation industry keeps shipping the jobs over to these places because they're getting people dirt cheap. And even though it's not right, and these people are coming out of school with animation degrees and then they, they're lucky they get to be storyboarder. I mean, I swear to God, you can't swing a dead cat on, you know, Twitter without hitting a storyboard artist. Not that you should swing dead cats because I love cats, but you know what I'm saying? Okay, you can't swing a, a salami around without hitting a, um, I, I couldn't think of something else. There's a thing that came to my mind. A vegan? Without hitting uh, as, as somebody who's now a, a uh, what do they call those? Storyboard artist. Okay. You, you know what I mean? It's like everybody and their brother comes out of, yeah. I, have, I have an art degree and now I'm a storyboard artist. Yeah. I mean, am I wrong? Yeah, and so are, you know, uh, 500 of your closest friends. Yeah, because even now, like, it, this isn't too dissimilar to how it works in the West, except in the West, the animation industry is much, much smaller. Mm -hmm. But most of the production work is done overseas now. Um, very few companies actually hire American animators or North American animators. Most of these people, it's like, even if you, you live in Burbank or Glendale or whatever, you know, you work on the storyboards, maybe work on the character designs, and then they ship it off overseas mm -hmm. because the labor's cheap. Right. And they do do some over here, but like, uh, like people are going for animation and it's, I don't, unless you're doing your own stuff, I don't know how far you're going to get. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, but I'm just being honest. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's sad though. But I mean, again, you know, the, the, the people behind the manga, behind the IP are the ones who are actually going to be making the money because they're going to get the money. Uh, from the animation, they're going to get the money from the merchandising because it's their IP. But it do, it does work that way over here too. Um, this is interesting. Working conditions are grim. Animators often fall asleep at their desks. Henry Thurlow is an American animator who's living and working in Japan. He has been hospitalized multiple multiple times due to illness brought by exhaustion. People have been dying. Yeah. There's been artists that collapsed and died and stuff like that because of it. Madhouse was recently accused of violating labor codes. Employees were working nearly 400 hours per month. That's a hundred a week and work, went 37 consecutive days with that single day off. Sounds like YouTube. A male animator's 2014 suicide was classified as a work-related incident after investigators found he had worked more than 600 hours in a month leading up to his death. This sounds like EA mm -hmm. over here. Well, I'm saying this is like the crunch that we're hearing about. Yeah, with the gaming companies, with uh, Rooster Teeth and that. It sounds like the crunch we're hearing, but this never ends. Yeah, and as, as there's more demand for anime, you're going to see conditions probably get worse because they're going to have to crack the whip harder to get you know more and more shows out and uh you know again it's a lot of these people are doing it because they have they have a love of, of the industry and of the art form but they're not getting rich off of it at all i mean um well here they break it down what they basically make yeah an animator in japan earns on average uh less than ten thousand dollars per year in their 20s less than nineteen thousand dollars in their 30s and livable but still meager uh, 31,000 in their 40s and 50s. And this would be the time that you would, you know, your your 40s and 50s are supposed to be your peak earning years. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when you've got your family um, and your kids are getting older and you're like, you know, sending your kids off to college and you're looking forward to retirement and you're making $30,000 a year. Right. Working 600 hours a month I know, or whatever. It, I mean, you break it down, you're, you're better off doing other jobs. I mean, to be honest. Yeah, the poverty line in Japan is 2.2 million so when you're starting out in your 20s you're definitely below the poverty you're, line. you are in your 30s too it's 2.1 yeah. 
but this is this is very similar to comics now uh, you know this is very similar to the comic book industry now because unless you're working on a top top book for marvel and dc you know most of these creators are only making fifteen twenty thousand dollars a year if they're lucky if you're working for like boom or idw uh you know, the page rates are really low because there's so many people that'll effectively work for free now or next to nothing. Well, you know what gets me too is people want to do this, these jobs and they complain they don't have money and then they complain that they think they should have free this and free that because, you know, they don't have money. And I'm like, but you're choosing to do that. You can literally go work at, at Walmart and make more money than some of these jobs. Yeah. You know, I mean... Yeah, that's that's 100% true. Uh, animators make ends meet any way they can. Uh, freelance animator and game designer uh, Trumi Nishi earns most of her income from video game animation because she has to take care of her parents. On an animator's salary, she would have little chance of feeding herself. I mean, it's just sad. It's just really, really sad. But I think we're going to see more of this. It's like, you know, I, I guess where's the, where's the breaking point? Because you would think that with there being so much of a demand now for anime that that money would make its way and they they, they need people but you know no it's the same they're they're logging the same amount of money but they're spreading it out over more well it's usually the studios pocketing the money that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying the studios are keeping the money they're budgeting this money but they want to do twice as much with it yeah um and that's why they're you're not hearing anything because there is a demand for animated content even here in the west there's there's a huge demand uh for stuff like you know for netflix for content these these streaming services all need content but people are asking you know, because Crunchyroll, how they they sold Crunchyroll for as long as they did was, hey, we're going to give more money to mm -hmm. the animation industry, to these poor animators. That's and why High Guardian Spice didn't go over well at all. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. The biggest, you know, backlash against High Guardian Spice, which if you're not familiar, we're like the only ones talking about it. But High Guardian Spice is an original Crunchyroll original production. Original in quotes. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it does exist. There is a pilot floating around out there. Because uh, we got a takedown request from someone who gave us a description of the pilot. Now, apparently, it is animated in Japan, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. All the storyboards and everything are done here in the States. Uh, but they made a big deal about, you know, it being a uh, uh, diverse writer's room of mostly mm -hmm. women. Yeah, so uh, you know. yeah, they had a Kickstarter video. And they, instead of doing a, they said they were going to give a trailer and information. And basically, their trailer was a Kickstarter type video talking about how diverse they are. Yeah, um, so that didn't go well. But really what didn't go well was the fact that they apparently sunk a bunch of money. Now, this is before, this is before, uh, uh, I, I believe, the acquisition or right around the time of, they sunk a bunch of money into, you know, these original productions for Crunchyroll that, that have basically gone missing more or less. I think they're going to wind up on HBO Max. But they're like, well, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You can't pay Japanese animators more to produce the content we like, but you're going to go create original content that nobody asked for mm -hmm. and ask us to bankroll that. And then the subscription money went up. Uh, Crunchyroll went from $6.95 a month to $7.95 a month. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing happened with Rooster Teeth. They right. jacked up Rooster Teeth, which is also owned by Warner Brothers and AT&T and is producing quote unquote anime. I'm using their fingers because I don't consider Ruby a real anime. It's, you know, anime-esque. And uh, they're producing the same kind of thing. But that's why people are having a problem with it because they're like, you know, we've been bankrolling this, trying to get money to these animators, and it's not, it's not happening. But it, you know, something's got to give because there's clearly more of a demand for anime now than there ever well, yeah. has been. And and these these streaming services are banking on anime to you know help them stand out, and you know they're partnering up with whoever they can partner with to get more anime onto their their streaming services, except for Disney because they lost Ghibli and everything else. But they're banking on their old animations. So it's interesting because it's gonna, they're all, their animes was pushing it through. And we're seeing the same thing with, with book sales. Manga yeah. is what's doing well. Yeah. And, you know, this is all stuff we've been saying for weeks, months, months, years. Years. Over a year, we've been saying the pendulum swinging back toward anime and manga. But, you know, with it, it's kind of a double edged sword. Just real quick here, uh, this is right before they announced High Guardian Spice. Crunchyroll gave $100 million to Japan, the Japanese anime industry. That was in 2018. I think they were kind of like case building. Like, oh, guys, we're paying these Japanese animators. Uh, really, we are. Really, we are. But, yeah, I think I think they're going to crack the whip more and more on, on the animators because there is a huge demand for content. A lot of it makes its way over here. 
and uh, the only ones actually getting rich are the you know the yeah, Warner brothers and and sadly Netflix. what happens when we see him in the comics is that you might say okay well, i'm not going to work for that and you know and you say well, why don't they just strike why don't they just say no we're not gonna work for that because they replace you like that and there's a there's a bunch of people who just do it for free for the honor of doing it yep and you know and that's why the rates are so bad because there's always someone to take your place and they'll work cheaper just that, saying that's just it nobody's irreplaceable and in comics you know they're they're you know jobbing everything out overseas because it's cheaper and you know people are like why are these tumblr artists working at marvel i'm like because they're getting paid something that's yeah. that's more than they were getting on tumblr right you know and, and marvel they're looking to cut corners because disney's probably telling them hey you got to be profitable yeah so. but i think they're gonna get their butts handed to them soon because they've lost so much of their audience it's ridiculous yeah, but um, it's going to be really interesting to watch this, especially as Hollywood starts to strip mine uh, anime and manga properties mm -hmm. to see if that money actually makes its way. Oh, uh, it's not going to. Yeah, I don't think it's going to. I mean, to like though. I said, and it doesn't matter if they say, I'm not going to do it. That's fine. There's a bunch of people who lined up who will do, do it for less or free. So how can you compete with free? No, I'm just saying, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. So you see it in comics all the time. Yeah. It's, it's the same kind of mentality. So uh, really the only way you're going to make money, like real money doing this is if you, if you do your own thing. And you can find an audience for your own thing. Yeah. So that I would mean, be, you have to have the audience for your thing or it's not going to work. Yeah. So that would be my recommendation. Just work for hire someplace else. You're not going to make any money. I mean, I always tell people if it was me and I was telling people, giving advice to people, um, people want to quit their day job to go do art full time. And my answer to that is unless you know, you have a gig that's going to pay you very, very well to quit your day job, do art full time. You need to keep your day job and do art when you have time. And you know, it might mean you not go to as many movies or you might not play games or you know, we used to work uh, a job and come home and work till 2 a.m. and have to get up next day, we, you know, crack it on early. We do it six now Six o'clock in the morning, I got, yeah, I got up at six o'clock in the morning, I'd go to work all day, come home, see the family for like an hour, mm -hmm. basically, and then I'd turn right around and start working. I'd worked on Disney comics. I'd work on Disney comics. And we worked until, on our own. Yeah. And I'd help her. I, I mean, I did a lot of stuff too, but um, don't give up your day job because I, I I can't tell you how many times, you know, the way the, the, the advances are on book deals and everything, if you can even get that. Yeah. It's so low now and it just keeps going down. You needed the job. So don't quit your day job. And there's so many, I can't even tell you how many people who have book deals that actually have a job job too. Yeah, they have to. I mean, because you can't afford to live on what they they pay you. So, no, just saying. Just saying, it, it doesn't pay well. But uh, your your best bet anymore is to try to do your own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and monetize. That's not easy, way. but that's your best bet. Yep. So we're gonna wrap this up. Yep. Okay. So uh, on the plus side, lots of anime to watch on streaming services. So. On the negative side, if you're an artist and you want to work in anime industry, you might not want to do that because they are going to not pay you, and crunch is a thing. Crunch is They're a thing. They're gonna crunch you till you are a puddle. Crunch, crunchy, crunchy, crunch time. Stay crunchy, or don't stay crunchy. Don't yeah, don't get, stay crunchy. Don't let yourself get crunched. Um, all right, so we're gonna wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye. Thinking about printing your own comic books, graphic novel, or manga? We recommend our friends over at Print Ninja. We've been using Print Ninja as long as they've been printing comics, and both the quality and price is excellent. Mention Clownfish TV and get an additional 5% overrun of your book order quantity printed for free. For free! That's free books, people. Just mention this offer on the phone or in the additional information box on the quote request form. That's PrintNinja.com or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to ClownfishSupport.com. That's ClownfishSupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.